It's like a cardigan, but without the sleeves. <laughs> We're here to talk about Elizabeth Shaw. 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 Right. Oh, hello! <laughs> Thank you for joining us once again for this, the 24th episode of Heroes and Villains, a for Drunk, Drunk Doctor, Doctor Who subsidiary podcast. Thank you for subsidiary. hopping in your TARDISes and traveling back in time as we examine an old, old companion, Elizabeth Shaw. What are we drinking today? She Adam? wasn't that old. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago. Magma Flame. Because life is short for bad tasting alcohol. And for you? Uh, Twisted, Twisted Tea. tea. Because you like twisted tea. And hubris. And hubris. <laughs> Alright, so. Um, Isn't that a phrase, drinking er, pride? Swallowing your pride? All right. Pride cometh before the fall. And that's what hubris is, is the pride before that makes you fall. I was trying to make a pun about drinking and swallowing your pride. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, um, Still embarrassed about making an accent. <laughs> I guess pride is a summer uh, emotion. Full. Because it comes before fall. the fall. Yeah. yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Elizabeth Shaw, she was in 25 episodes. Basically, she is the third doctor, uh, Pertwee, third doctor's first companion. And I like she stuck around for so much longer than that. I guess she made a big impact. Give us the synopsis of Elizabeth Shaw. Okay. Like, what do they call that? Character, uh... Synopsis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, she shows up... Character analysis. Analysis, okay. Or both. Synopsis, then analysis. <laughs> right. Analysis. So Elizabeth Shaw is the doctor's assistant. Um, she shows up, and she's kind of assigned to him. A unit employee? Yeah, unit employee. Uh, she's very smart, and she does not, you know, uh, care for sometimes the doctor dismisses her intelligence, right? Yeah, he's kind of cold to her at first. Right. Uh, but he warms up to her eventually. As she proves herself. Right. That's called character development. Yay. Um, Which doesn't happen often, but we love it when it does. <laughs> doesn't happen often these days. It used to happen all the time. Something about... Humans like having one point and a second point to be able to draw a line. We go, oh, <laughs> he used to do this. Now he does this. Right, right. It's because of that. <laughs> yeah, he he used to uh, not be able to hit the target, but after years of training, he can hit the target every time. Or you yeah, know, right. right, right. He used to be a uh, I don't know a bad boyfriend, but after learning a few lessons, now he's a good boyfriend, stuff like that, you know? I want an example, but with a lot more funny. Example with a lot more funny? Yeah, you're dealing with really serious examples. Oh, I'm sorry. Bring it down. Okay, I don't know. All right. Um, I used to get indigestion when I had too much chili, but now I have tums before. <laughs> Gas X. <laughs> Those beans. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay. All right, anyway, Elizabeth Shaw, um, uh, she's kind of a throwback to um, Barbara as a really smart female companion. Not, not as smart as Zoe, but Zoe was younger. Elizabeth Shaw is uh, about middle age. Zoe was very... Like, like uh, Barbara was. Zoe is very specifically a mathematician specialist, and, right. and Elizabeth has a lot of broader knowledge of science in general, but a less specified skills in mathematics. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Barbara. But yeah, like Barbara. Yeah. Barbara was, was a, a history. history teacher. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's a bit of a throwback to Barbara, and uh, uh, we see her like again with Sarah Jane Smith a good bit. Yeah. Um, and the one in between them, specifically, Joe, is a complete flippity gibbet. We'll get to her next time we do Heroes and Villains, probably. Mm -hmm. She literally is the last dumb female that they have. You know, the classic we don't have dumb any more dodos. No, we don't have any more <laughs> dodos or Joe Grant. You you really can't portray women that way anymore. They yell about it. Well, um, it's also just not enjoyable to watch. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's a classic trope, especially... Uh, the dumb blonde is a classic like joke with all the jokes, yeah. yeah. Um, now they only allow men to be dumb and idiots. The women all have some, to be brilliant, you know? Some, but, 
That's what some tropes are enjoyable and fun to laugh at, but some are just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a good way to do a Dodo character. It's just always kind of... I feel like the point of that character is kind of to insert conflict, like artificial conflict through the companion because they don't know how else... Because the doctor is too capable to turn a situation into a, you know... They're, they're there to be clumsy and make a noise when they're hiding or... Yeah, yeah, and um, the, it's also... Which it, it just kind of feels... The other role the companion is to, A, uh, be the person who you see the show through. Mm-hmm. Okay, because you're not going to... You're Some, not going to identify with the doctor. Right, right. Yeah. right. You're going to identify with the Like companion. someone from Troy, that's a lot more relatable. Than, oh, wait. Yeah, she, she does. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Poor Katarina. Katarina. All right. <laughs> but, oh, and speaking of which, Sarah Kingdom... Oh, she was my favorite. Stuff. She she was she was For very one capable. Episode. One yeah. episode. Well, I mean, one serial. Yeah. yeah she was never like seven episodes. She does. Yeah, she does the same show. But she was a very good, capable, uh, intelligent woman. I feel like our definitions of companions are different. All right. Speaking of definition of companion, Elizabeth Shaw is one of the few companions not to travel with the Doctor and the TARDIS. Yeah. So she's not a companion. No, she is a companion. <laughs> I agree. And uh, to be fair. She kind of does when they have the TARDIS the control the, unit yeah. in Inferno and she zaps in and out of time. And then there's kind of like, she goes but in she the TARDIS, does really. there's times where they're working on the TARDIS mechanism. Yes. Yeah. You know, she's, she's still very involved with the TARDIS. Right, right. She, she is a companion. She, and there are other companions in the future that don't travel with the Doctor and the TARDIS. Um, very specifically, most of them are one-shot companions. She's one of the few long-running companions that doesn't do it. I feel like that's where our um, definitions differ because I don't have any experience with like those one-shot companions. Yeah. My definition is very embedded with like the more traditional ca- companions because right. that's what I've seen so far. We'll get there eventually. Um, so maybe I'll change my definition on, on characters like Sarah King Dillon. And yeah. Um, what? <laughs> Probably not on those. <laughs> All right. Um, and let's see. Wait. She was there for four serials, 25 episodes, but the, the serials were four, seven, seven, seven. Long serials. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Spearhead from <laughs> Space, <laughs> Doctor Who and the Silurians, The Ambassadors of Death, and Inferno. Mm-hmm. To me, the best one is Inferno. Um, but which one do you think she's the best in? I mean, her best performance. As opposed to the best serial with her in it. I feel like it's kind of a cop out because Inferno is such a good serial, but like, is. Is, is everyone had a great performance in it? But Elizabeth Shaw and the, and the lava's rushing in, and just the reactions and her her character role when they're trying to, you know, teleport away before the apocalypse, <laughs> and then how that was such an iconic scene like it you see it stick with the doctor as like he's his greatest fears are dredged up it's it was very uh striking for you know yeah and then she had a uh it's just the emotion she was able to convey um okay i feel like elizabeth shaw was kind of like a return to form for the companions because you have the very classic barbara and then they kind of experimented and then finally... With a did. bunch of others. Well, yeah. that's because he's stuck on different, Earth and he's not running around with aliens. And there's different uh, archetypes of companions and then Elizabeth, right. Elizabeth Shaw is kind of like a... Ah, yeah, this is familiar. That's a well, uh, strong, capable... And then... Go ahead. <laughs> to be fair, they start off with two present Earth Day school teachers and his granddaughter. Okay? Then he loses the granddaughter mm-hmm. and he gets a Vicky who is a girl from far future Earth, okay? Then he loses Ian and Barbara, the, this modern school day, and he gets, um, uh, what was his name? Um, the space man? Yes, yeah, Stephen? No, no, Stephen was the no, Navy um, man. Wait, wait, no, you're right. Stephen was the okay. Stillway space guy. Who is, I'm confusing him <laughs> with the Navy. I have a know. list somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. It was Steven, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Spaceman. Future. Steven. Yeah, from, Steven. From Future Earth. So, so he gets Steven from Future Earth. He already has Vicky from Future Earth. Yeah. Then they get 
Katarina. Um, from past Earth. Well, yeah, from from way past Earth. Then they get Sarah Kingdom. Do you know that future Earth and past Earth kind of sound like the same thing? Because past Earth would be in the future if you're past it. No. Alright. The okay. Then they get Sarah Kingdom. It's like, you know, the flammable and inflammable mean the same thing. But yeah, but like future and past do not mean the same thing. Unless you pass something, then it's in the future. No. Because it's in the past. if I'm past the finish line, then I'm in the future of the the finish line's in the past. Because Correct. I passed it. Right. You're in the future, the fu the finish line's in the yeah, past. Yeah, so if we're past Earth, then then it sounds like we're in the future. So if someone's from past Earth, it sounds like you're talking about the future. You're not driving. Flammable right. and inflammable are the same thing. Right. They sound like opposites. Um, okay, so so then you get uh, Sarah Kingdom, and then you get Dodo. Dodo is like the one other character since Ian and Barbara who are from present day Earth. Then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, then you get then you get Ben and Polly. They're from present day Earth. What Ben and Polly? They're like a younger version of Ian and Barbara. Kind of, yes. Yeah. But but then you go through then you go through. Um, uh, Jamie, who's way past again, Earth. Oh, Jamie, yeah. Um, not, not as far past. <laughs> right, right, right. But he's, he's in the past. And then you, uh, from Jamie, we get Victoria, who's also the past. Um, and we finally, we see the Brigadier, but he's only in one deal at the time, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, then you jump around, you get Zoe from the far future in space. Mm -hmm. And so, with the exception of the horrible Dodo, well, and Ben and Polly, you haven't seen, like, a normal Earth-bound present-day companion for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when she comes into that role, it's, it's kind of like, oh, this is nice. I can, I can commiserate, you know, empathize with this particular yeah. character. I feel like the writers were going back and forth on, you know, for the viewer, we'll have someone from the future so they can relate to the Doctor and be like, oh, I understand what you're talking about. <laughs> and then they explain it, and they're like, it's this, right? And then they're like, that's how we'll explain it to the viewer. And then they go to, <clears throat> like with Steven, he's like, and, and um, I'm so bad with names. Uh, but that's the other... And then and then they go to, like, well, let's explain it to the viewers by having the panning not understand what's going on, so the doctor can explain. So it's either the doctor's explaining... Or the companions piecing it out, and like there are those two methods of explaining it to the viewers, rather than just having someone from the same time period as the viewer having it. <laughs> but that's one of the other main um, reasons for the companion is to have the doctor explain things to somebody, mm -hmm. and when he's explaining it to them, we're learning about it because we are as ignorant of what's going on as the companion. The fly on the wall. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, anyway, wish we had Joe Grant for uh, sorry, not Joe Grant. Uh, wish, wish we had Elizabeth Shaw for longer in the show, but apparently the actress got pregnant and she had to leave the show because they couldn't have the companion pregnant. Like Zoe 101, Britney Spears' sister, younger sister, Disney Channel show, got pregnant. Last season had to wear like sweaters. And <laughs> okay, sure. Kids show. So Don't know, but okay. Um, <laughs> Kid show, but pregnancy happens and kids get to see that too. <laughs> All right, um, is it teenage pregnancy, which is why it's controversial? How young was she? I don't know, 17, 18? 17, 18, you'll be married. But she was, it was a children's show, is why it was. And she was teenage. So. And she wasn't married. It wasn't the Disney, uh, <laughs> it wasn't the Disney look, yeah. <laughs> okay, I can see that. All she right. was in high school, I think, in the show, which is... Okay, well, people do get pregnant in high school. Message. They yeah. do. I don't know if that's a good idea to... Have, you know, no, not necessarily. Financial. Things happen. All right. Anyway, um, anything else about Elizabeth? We're show? not telling you not to marry young, but please don't marry young. <laughs> well, the three best ways to stay out of poverty in your life is to do three things before you get... You have a kid. Graduate high school. Get a job and um, get, married. get married. If you do those three things before you have a child, your odds of being in poverty at some point in your life, or for a lot of your life, mm -hmm. go down drastically. Like that's not a moral opinion. That's like statistically. Yeah, statistics. It's 
still a good idea. Uh, you know what? People are still offended by that. That's crazy. Because statistics don't care about your feet. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can be offended by this shirt or his shirt. You can be offended by my hair or his hair. Who cares? Person, that's a very offensive shirt. No, well, thank you. It's for Belize. I have also a very offensive graphic on my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. People get offended over the stupidest things, and you know, more power to them. Don't care. That's their right. Yeah, it's my and, right not uh, to care. But it's all right not to care <laughs> and to tell you to buzz off. All right. Okay. Um, anything else about Elizabeth Shaw? We about ran again, but okay. We will probably see you in well, maybe two, probably three weeks. It'll be the new year. We'll see you January in 2022. 2022. From the future. <laughs> the future. future. All right. Have fun. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, just go out and have a good time. Spend Happy some time with family, friends. Hanukkah. Happy. I think Hanukkah happened a while back. Young uh, Boxing Day. Um, that's a thing. <laughs> Every other holiday you can. I'd be. Of. I would be interested to know if we had any Canadian viewers. You can view the statistics, but I already know the answer. It's no, because <laughs> neither of us live in Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. Canadian. I don't speak Canadianese. Have fun, guys. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. -bye.